I'm the class of 2015. I'm an accounting and business administration major. So you, um, what year you were a I was a freshman, a when, freshman when the mock convention last happened. Okay. Did you have a role in the mock convention? I was in the Ohio uh, State, uh, I guess, delegate, and um, it was a very cool experience. Obviously, I'm from Pennsylvania, uh, but I just felt that at the time, more of my friends were in the um, or sorry, the party for Ohio. I didn't have been a very cool experience. I got to do some political research um, and got to assist the, the leadership uh, in ultimately picking a, a candidate. Tell me a little more about political research. What does that mean? Okay, uh, well, basically, the leader of our group would break Ohio down into districts and you'd look at historical voting patterns. Um, and who, and such as how the candidates did by county uh, and, and by district, and then from there we just kind of projected how the candidates from 2000, sorry, 2012 uh, would do. Did you, um, just for fun, go back and look and see if you were accurate? Uh, we were, yes. Uh, Ohio, turns out we were, we were pretty accurate, and it doesn't help, or it helps that uh, Paul Ryan was also from there, who ended up being Mitt Romney's, uh, vice presidential candidate, um, and I think Ohio was was a strong factor um, in Mitt Romney choosing him. Were there any skills that you you know put to use or learned in the course of my convention that you think you'll carry on to your career? Or? I think it was a great experience to to meet a lot of people uh, from all all sides of the school. Um, it's ninety five percent of the schools involved in the mock convention, and it's just a great opportunity to meet different people, to be involved with different causes. Uh, there's obviously fun aspects to it. There's studious aspe aspects to it. Um, and I guess it's a great way to meet everyone. Um, did you know about the mock convention before you came? Before yes. Uh, my, when I originally was looking at uh, WNL, uh, my dad's a UVA grad. Uh, one of his best friends uh, was a WNL grad who was involved in the mock convention, and so growing up, I've heard all about it. Uh, I believe he was a senior uh, when he got to when the mock convention last or happened during his four years here. Uh, and he said it's a great experience. Uh, he's not he's not really involved in politics, but he said it's a great experience to be a part of, and it's one of the longstanding traditions at WNL. Um, we're gonna do what we're called sound bites, which are kind of like yeah. you know ten minute things. Um, what would you say to a prospective student or a student who's like a freshman now yeah. to encourage them to participate in mock convention? It only happens once every four years. Um, it happened to me freshman year, and that's I guess it's kind of unlucky because I'd like to have more of a, a role in it. I'd like to be more involved in the politics. Uh, being an accounting and business major, I don't really get to be involved with the politics that much unless it's voting for, for the executive committee or voting for fraternity stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely just get involved. The class of 2016 and 2017, you guys are going to be the leaders in the when the convention uh, next happens uh, in 2016. So definitely get involved. It's a great opportunity. You learn a lot about the politics. You're on a national stage. Uh, and it just highlights what makes WNL so special. Is there anything else you'd like to add or any personal experiences? Um, well, obviously, I'm not as involved in the politics now, but looking back, um, it's a great opportunity to learn more about the United States political system and more about, I guess, the, Repu the national committees, the Republican and Democratic, um, and just politics in general. Uh, I haven't really studied that, that in depth since my, since my freshman year, uh, but it makes you think about how, how cool of an opportunity uh, and how unique of a political system the United States has and how it's a great opportunity that you get to experience that in a small school like this. Did you enjoy the speakers? That yes, uh, Mike Huckabee is one who comes to name. Uh, the debate between Ann Coulter and James Carville is I, I, one, of the, one of the coolest moments of my life, uh, I would say. And just seeing a number of, number of national figures uh, speak at a school like this. I mean, we have 1,800 students. It's not not speaking at University of Texas, they're speaking at a small Virginia school. Uh, it was a very cool experience. Uh, I got to shake hands with a few of them. And it's, I'm going to cherish that moment uh, for the rest of my life.
this is the first convention that um, Twitter has been actually part of the convention. Okay. People were tweeting. Did yeah. you do any tweeting or anyone you know? Did you see people tweeting? Yeah, I mean, I was I've, I've been an active tweeter uh, for a while, but I remember following the Twitter the Twitter feed. Uh, in the days and weeks leading up to the convention and the, the days of the convention. And it was very cool, that posting pictures of people with the different delegates or people with the speakers. Um, I think social media has played a very important role in the emergence of politics in the national picture. Uh, and I think it's going to be a changing landscape in the future, but I think so right now social media is playing a very important role and will, and will continue to. Yeah. Right there cutting edge. Yeah. Anything else you can think of? No, that was great. We're, we're set. Thank All right. You. Tell me to kind of look more at the camera, look at you. Sure. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> well, you saw earlier. So we'll start with your name, your class year, where you're from, and your major. All right. So my name is Mark Swinski. I'm a senior, a member of the class of 2014. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. And I'm a business and history double major. Okay, so you were a sophomore when? I was. I was a sophomore during my convention. Uh, my freshman year, I was lucky enough to apply and be selected as a state chair. Uh, so during the convention, I was a state chair for Washington State. Okay. Well, what, what does a state chair do? A state chair is the, uh, there's a state chair for each state delegation. So there's a couple more than 50 because of how the political conventions work. And the state chair's primary responsibility is to organize the entire student body into the delegations and help lead them in political research, making parade floats, and other events like that. Um, we'll talk for a minute about political research first. Can you also kind of elaborate on what, what that entails? Right, so political research is a <laughs> I shouldn't talk with my hand in front of my mouth. Uh, political research is trying to figure out where your state's delegates are going to go. So that involves contacting people, reading the news, looking at past election results, trying to figure out which areas vote which way. I know in Washington State there's certain areas that are by military bases. They vote way differently from Seattle or Olympia, even though it is a heavily uh, Democratic state and it's the Republican the National Convention we were simulating. Uh, there's still very big differences across the state. So trying to understand those nuances and how different candidates would play in different areas and how that would impact the overall results was the key focus of at least our state's research. And did you get it right? Uh, we did. It was very close. I remember I was traveling for an interview. I saw it on my uh, phone on a, a notification and we were very, very close and I was quite pleased. Um. Yes. Um, so there's not, there aren't professors like guiding this. You, you didn't have a politics professor come and say, this is what you, how you need to do the research. How did you know what to do? So it's basically a student-run organization. I believe Professor Connolly was the advisor to the upper tier of leadership. Uh, but I took my marching orders from uh, Zach Wilkes. He was the uh, political tri-chair. And uh, I was able to be involved in kind of the decision making up till the very end. I was at one of the last uh, delegate uh, allocating meetings, uh, which was pretty interesting because I wasn't normally invited to those. And uh, so for the most part, it was just students telling students the best practices and what to do rather than a professor. So it's a neat learning experience, one, because you have to learn by yourself and learn from each other, and two, because it is so independent and autonomous of normal structures. Um, is there any anecdotes about float building or the parade? Well, uh, yeah, I, uh, I I have several uh, like this. So uh, I guess I could I talked about the float. I also I was basically booed off the stage. Uh, it was oh, pretty funny. Okay, excellent. So, okay, so, yeah, okay. okay. So uh, each state chair, one of the main public responsibilities is to announce your state's delegate count. Uh, so you receive that from the uh, political chair of what the final count should be. And uh, you have to come up with something generally funny allocating your delegates. Uh, I really struggle trying to come up with something. So I find the, uh, the Twilight series, the books and movies are filmed and based in Washington. So I made a joke about Team Jacob and Team Edward. So there was a combination of girls shrieking and guys booing. And I just had to shrug and walk off the stage. 
Um, so tell me about floats, too. All right. So float building is probably one of the uh, more daunting uh, organizational responsibilities because you need to find a trailer. And there's not all that many trailers in Rockbridge County. You come, after you come to think of it, when you need 75 or something. So uh, you've got to find a truck to tow it with. Then you've got to figure out what goes on it. Uh, we made a replica of the Space Needle from Seattle. Uh, got a, I think we had a pine tree on it, kind of, uh, because it's the Evergreen State. And uh, everyone wore Starbucks aprons, and uh, one uh, lucky guy got to dress up like George Washington. Uh, so I, I don't think he was only George Washington in the, the parade. I think uh, several states had their own Washingtons, but you know, we're the only state named after Washington. So. What, um did you know about mock convention before you came here? I did. I was uh, generally familiar with it during the admissions process. Uh, I would say it contributed to my decision to come here. I thought it was a very cool experience. As There's nothing really like it anywhere else. Maybe at one or two schools have something similar. I had participated in things like Model United Nations in high school, so I was familiar with the simulation, like the, that model. And I always thought that was really cool because by getting to act in the place of you know, the uh, uh, Republican Party head in the state of Washington, I was able to learn differently than if I just read about it. Mm -hmm. Or would you say that there were skills that you learned that will carry over to your Absol career? Absolutely. There's definitely several key skills that I learned uh, regarding people management, how to recruit people to do something. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, there's a finite pool of state delegates and you need to find ways to recruit them so that there's less work to do per person. And uh, so it is, that, that was always a, a neat experience trying to recruit people and develop that sense of energy in each delegation. Um, as well as just the overall, how to delegate responsibility, organize people doing different things, try to make something come together at the end. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of balls in the air and then you've got to bring them all back down in one long weekend. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool experience. Um, what would you say to um, future students who, to encourage them to participate? I would say to a future student that mock convention only happens once during your college career. While it is better to be older and, and everything, the key lessons are always there. You always will learn from it. It's really fun. You get to see speakers. It's something that your peers won't ever have. So it sets you apart, helps you develop skills. I know one thing, somewhere in some admissions publication I read as a senior in high school, uh, WNL doesn't recruit leaders, WNL produces leaders, or something to that effect. And that's definitely, things like mock convention make that the case because there are so many leadership positions and so many opportunities for leadership. You'd be hard pressed not to have to uh, do something that involves leadership before graduating just from mock convention alone. Um, is there anything that you would say to um, prospective speakers? I know that sometimes... Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm also on contact committee, so oh. we have to recruit speakers too. Uh, uh, so we worked actually, as a member of contact committee, we worked with the mock convention, convention speakers uh, committee to try to recruit speakers and make sure we planned accordingly. Because uh, I guess something I'd like to add, the yeah, there were several kickoff events, including Newt Gingrich's speech on the Colonnade, which was uh, a really cool experience. I know he'd been around to a lot of schools. That really set off the excitement for uh, the 2012 mock convention. But there was also an event in uh, uh, the fall of 2011 where uh, uh, several speakers, including Larry Sabato, um, Mike Allen with Politico, uh, uh, James Carville's wife, I'm forgetting her name. Mary Madeline. Uh, Mary, Madeline uh, Mary Madeline or? Yeah. Mary Ma Madeline. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was in. Uh, and they were all speaking kind of about the, the pr pr trying to predict and project and what factors are going to be important. So it, it isn't just the weekend. It is actually kind of a year-long year -long thing. Uh, but what I would say to a speaker uh, who is considering coming to Washington and Lee is that it has historically been a platform where students have identified who will be successful. There is a good deal of media there. Uh, and also that you're able to share your experiences, your viewpoints with an, with an audience that's very receptive. 
and interested in learning and hearing from you. So as far as a rewarding speech, you're not, you're not having to um, try to please everybody. It's an easier audience to please because everybody is interested in what you have to say. I know that um, like, well, uh, Ken Cuccinelli spoke and that it was clear he was going to be a um, big time player in the future. Um, same John Huntsman's speech was very well received, so it'll be interested to see what he does in 2016. Um, and it's also interesting, Thaddeus McCotter came. He was great, he played his electric guitar, and then two years later he somehow messed up the uh, requirements for getting reelected and was not eligible to run. So that was uh, kind of a little bit of a joke on campus uh, a couple years later when Thaddeus McCotter can't run because he can't get enough signatures. Uh, kind of surprising for an incumbent. Didn't know that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. really funny. We talked about it a bunch. Like, how, how does this guy not figure that out? Um, he, he had his district. Like, he would not have lost, and he couldn't get enough signatures to run. I loved him. I thought he was great. Yeah, he was great. But he yeah. yeah, he, I don't know what he did. But he Is there any, anything else you can think of? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, I guess since you asked Stu about the social media, yes. uh, I remember sitting in the Palm seeing the uh, social media updates. I was there, my parents had come in to, to watch the convention, and uh, it was pretty funny being in the Palms, having it live. Well, the convention wasn't being live tweeted, but the live tweets from earlier were circulating on the TV, so Lexington still really gets involved in the convention. It does, it really does. The whole town turns out for the parade. Yeah, it's a, yeah that, that parade was, it was really fun. I know I was driving the float, so that was, quite nerve-wracking in itself. Uh, I know pulling out of the, uh, the staging area, I uh, jolted everybody in the back. Uh, so fortunately, there was no, no, uh, no damage done. But uh, it's, it's, uh, so that's even a learning experience. I learned how to drive a parade float. But you never know when you might need that. Yeah, you never know. I mean, there's <laughs> parades all the time. So uh, small town, that's right. who knows where you'll be, what you need to do. I think we're set. All right. Thank you so much. You I have advantage of hearing ahead of time. Is everybody's phone? Sorry, yeah, mine's over there. Okay. Thank you. Are you from Texas? No. Alabama. Oh, I'm from Texas. Okay. okay. Um, we'll start with um, your name, your class year, your hometown, and your major. Okay. Uh, I'm Blair Tynes. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm a junior, and I'm an economics major. So when the last mock convention came around, you would have been a freshman. Yes. Did you have any role in that convention? Um, I did a little bit. I was part of the Alabama delegation, um, so I rode the float and helped uh, participate in building that. And I did a little bit of research. Um, the way our delegation head for the state split us up into counties, um, basically, I guess, to see what counties were going to go, which directions. So I, I pulled a little bit of data for my county. but. That was kind of my, my biggest regret about my comms, that I was a freshman. And I kind of wish it had come around maybe this year or sophomore year, where I could have had a, played a bigger role and had more of an understanding. Did you, um, did you know about the mock convention before you came? No, no ma'am, not at all. So, so it was, I mean, that was, it was really neat. Um, did you enjoy the speakers? I did, I thought they were great. Um, I didn't realize how how big it actually was until I walked in to Duramus Gymnasium for the first time and saw all the chairs lined out and um, yeah I guess virtually every speaker was, is, was a household name which is really neat to get that many big name people to such a small town like Lexington. Would you have any words of advice um, or an appeal to for future speakers any idea of why they should come to Lexington to address this group? Uh, probably for the history of the event, um, there have been, you know, for, I, I don't know exactly how long it's been going on, but I've seen pictures of the old old conventions. I mean, it's been going on for a very long time, and there have been some, you know, big-name people that have, that have participated in the past, so to be part of that legacy, I would think would be a, would be a big draw for uh, speakers to come, come speak at it. What about um, future students? Is, um, should they participate in the mock convention? I would say to get, get involved early and as often as you can, um, especially, I mean, I don't think anyone, it comes around once every four years, and so I don't think anyone really realizes how big it is, like, at, at the time. 
um, because no one's seen it before. And then you see it happening in, in real real time, and you realize you know this is actually a really big deal. And I don't I don't think as a student body, WNL students can really appreciate that until it happens. So I, I would definitely say, given the opportunity, you should get involved to the best of your ability because it only you only get one shot at it. Um, what was the highlight for you? What was the highlight? Uh, for me, it was probably. Um, I don't remember who all spoke, but Mike Huckabee was one of the speakers, and we were walking out of the gym, uh, out of whatever side of the gym we were on. We went out the back entrance um, to go back to our dorms, and Mike Huckabee's car was just waiting there. And there, all the cars were lined up with, you know, the security personnel and everybody, the drivers and everything. And he just walked up to me and two or three of my friends and just chatted with us for about five minutes, not even about politics or anything, just you know, how we were doing. You know, what do we think about the school, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a very personal moment. Um, so it, it was really neat. Uh, were, were there any skills that you used or learned, like during the research or even just dealing with the delegation that you might use in your future career? Is there any, is it, was it a learning experience, would you say? Yes, ma'am. I, I mean, I think, I think it was very, I mean, I'm not, not really on the politics, mm -hmm. you know, track or side of things at all, but I mean, just to, be able to look at you know historical data and and make a prediction about what you think where you where you you think your state's going to lean and then put that into the much bigger picture of where you think um, who you think the the representative is going to be um, for the uh, for the political party. I mean that's applicable to all kinds of different you know job environments, working in a team, putting pieces together to create a greater whole. One of the things that struck us about particularly this last convention, having seen several of them now, was the technology just in four years, just you know, like leaps and bounds. This was the first convention where people use Twitter. Did did you do any social media or tweeting or any of your friends? Do you have any first hand stories of that? Oh I actually don't I don't I don't really use Twitter. I've never gotten into it. But um I know um, on the, I guess, Mitt Romney couldn't take the phone call or something, and his wife took, took, took the acceptance over her cell phone. So, I mean, that, that, was, that was pretty neat. I think maybe she was even on a plane, or maybe he was on a plane or something. So, I mean, it was kind of, uh, I guess that's, you know, yeah. that's kind of cool. That is cool. I mean, you know, eight years ago, 12 years ago, that wouldn't have happened. Right. Is there anything else you can think of? Can I ask about the parade at all? Oh, yes. Um, was the parade fun? It was. I remember it being pretty cold. Um, we, um, we, I think the theme of our float was like stars fell in Alabama. Um, so we just all didn't really dress up, but just kind of rode down and uh, is. I mean, it's a lot like a high school homecoming parade, but on a much, much greater scale. I guess the whole city was out. So it was, you know, you don't really, I guess you see the Christmas parade in Lexington, but you don't really, that's kind of the only opportunity you get to participate in something like that, so that was fun. One of the, one of the few times where WNO really, literally is on parade for like the whole town too. Right. Know, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any thoughts on the Watt Convention or thoughts on the future? Should it go on? Should it go uh, on? I think it absolutely should. I mean, I think the accuracy speaks for itself with WNO predicting the um, out of party candidate, and you know I think it was overall a great experience, um, and I definitely wish it came around, you know, more than once during my WL tenure. It's expensive. Right. Um, why would someone give money to help further it, or why should? I mean, I think it's, I, mean, I know a lot of different universities do this, but I mean, I think it's the longest standing mock convention. I mean, it's a great, it's a great way for students to get involved and, you know, just test out the waters about whether they want, could potentially want to do something like this. I mean, there are all kinds of, I think, like just, for example, being on the fundraising committee, like if you had to do that, I mean, that's a very applicable, real world, you know, scenario. And it, that's just one example of all the different opportunities it provides students to to become involved in, 
and, you know, and something that's very important. I mean, it receives national attention um, through major news outlets. So it's, you know, I think it's a, it's a great tradition and, and definitely, uh, it definitely needs the fundraising support to continue. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Much. You should go to law. Good. All righty. Good to go. That audio and everything? Okay. So we'll start with your name, your class year, your major, and your hometown, please. Okay. Uh, my name is Alvin Thomas. I'm a senior, class of 2014, uh, originally from Skokie, Illinois, so just north of Chicago. And I'm a chemistry engineering major with a minor in poverty and human capability studies. <laughs> That's a really cool mix. Yeah. Um, can you hear the sirens? No, we're okay. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We only have about six minutes left. Okay. Um, so for the last mock convention, you would have been a, s a sophomore. sophomore. Yep. Did you have a role in that convention at all? Um, I didn't have a leadership role. Uh, most of my friends did, though. I was part of the Alaska delegation, um, and my friend was the head of the Alaska delegation, so I helped him with that. How does that work? You're from Illinois, but you're... Well, so you can, you're allowed to choose whichever state delegation you want to be a part of, and um, I chose to be with, uh, you know, in one of my friend's delegations. Just, you know, the experience is kind of the same as far as, like, doing the research, learning about that. I might have known more about Illinois politics, but I also could have guessed where Illinois was going. Um, so it'd be, it was interesting to try something new, I guess, something different. So you did some of the political research? A little bit, yeah. What, what does that mean? Um, for me, it, it involved just learning about Alaska, the way the districts were divided, and um, just about the politics of some of those districts. My friend who was in charge of that delegation did a lot more of the groundwork, and I was just kind of assisting him with, with whatever he needed. Um, I played a, a much larger role in actually the parade and getting ready for um, our float in the parade. Tell me a little about that. What was the, your theme? Uh, so we were in Alaska, so of course we had Sarah Palin involved on our float. Um, we uh, <laughs> we played off the line where uh, you know I can see a uh, I can see Russia from my backyard. So we uh, had a Kremlin on our float, and one of my friends uh, dressed up as Sarah Palin. The audience loved her. You know, they, she uh, she we had um, she was just standing out in front waving to the crowd and. It was a lot of fun. Um, the Minnesota float was right in front of us for some reason. and They had the a Mighty Ducks theme going. Um, so we kind of had some back and forth with them throughout the entire parade, which was a lot of fun. So um, where, do, where do you build floats here? Um, we did a lot of work. Um, my friend is in the same fraternity, so we actually did a lot of the prop painting and things like that at the fraternity house in the backyard. Um, and we just kind of put it all together uh, near the middle school where we started off. They just had that plot ready for all the floats. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, when I was in college, we had to like get a barn on somebody's farm to, to build our floats. Mm -hmm. um, just totally derailed myself there. Speakers. Speakers, yes. Thank you. Um, who was your favorite speaker? Um, I was really glad that Huntsman uh, came to talk. Um, I also really liked uh, our Barber's talk, uh, the keynote right before we got the um, got the results. I guess. Uh, I mean, it was just. I think it was. I had a lot of friends that were on the committee, the speakers committee. So um, I think it was more exciting to hear about their experiences, not the actual uh, um, the speeches themselves, which were very interesting. They had some great insight, but. Um, more to hear how my friends could just have that back and forth with them in, in more informal situations. You know, they would sit down for dinner or just talk behind the stage beforehand or afterwards. And um, just to get a little bit of that inside scoop was really cool for them and kind of made me wish I was more involved in the, the speakers committee and those kind of things. If, for future students, what would you say to get them more involved? Would you somebody to take part in what convention? Yeah, um, as an engineering major, I don't have a huge background in politics, which is why I didn't originally seek out those roles, but everyone gets involved, or a very large percentage of the student body gets involved, and I think that's one of the greatest things about mock convention. I also think that's the reason why you should um, 
if you have any interest at all, just go out of your comfort zone and find a leadership role or get more involved in your delegation, do something like that. Um, in the end, most people are involved, so you know if you can put more into it, I think you get a little bit more out. Did you know about Lot Convention before you came here? Yeah, um, I learned about it on my tour, and I thought it was a really cool exercise. Um, and you know, I didn't know too much about it, but it was just one of those things about Washington Lee that just seemed different. Um, it made it feel like students were willing to talk about issues like you know current affairs that um, in a larger context I guess not just like little conversations here and there but the entire school seemed to be engaging in one large conversation which I thought was really interesting. Um, why would a speaker be interested in coming to take part in this law convention? Do you have any idea? I mean, can you, if you were trying to get someone to come, what would you, how would you tempt them? Um, so it's it's been around for a hundred years, and since it's every four, I guess it was the twenty fifth last time, or around that amount. Um, so it's it's a long standing tradition. It has some history to it. Um, it's accurate more often than not. Uh, we've also had big names come in the past, which gives a little bit more um, credit, I guess, to the event. That that always helps with uh, getting other, more speakers to come in the future. It's also an opportunity to um, engage a younger population, which I think is really important. Um, when you have a group of a couple hundred, a couple thousand young people willing to sit down and listen to you um, and really engage in the background politics of what's going on, I think that's a great platform to, uh, for a politician to say, this is my message and this is the message I want to get out to the younger voting population. And, uh, and with media as it is now, even that platform, even if you're only in front of a couple hundred, a couple thousand people, you can also use that same moment to send that out on Twitter, on Facebook, on uh, social media, and get it to a larger population anyway. So it's just another venue. Um, and I think it, it's important in that it really shows that you're committed to discussing and increasing dialogue to a younger voting population. Did you use social media? Are we good? I don't know. Was I there anything take else? Okay. I mean, I'm out of take. I know. <laughs> I know. What I'm saying. Social media yourself doing this? Um, so I don't have a huge Twitter presence, but I did, um, you know, use hashtags on Twitter around MaCon, um, and I, I kind of just follow other people on Twitter. So I saw a lot of MaCon tweets coming out. I think it was especially cool um, during some of the speeches people would pull out, especially during the debate um, between Ann Coulter and um, Carver, or Car James Carville. James Carville. Um, you know, people would just tweet out some of their favorite lines, like if, if Coulter said something that needed to be fact-checked or something, someone would send that out, or if they really liked what she said, they would just send it out. So it kind of gave a little bit more feedback, um, especially in, with the debate. Uh, what students were interested in, what students wanted to hold on to, or fact checked, or things like that, which I thought was really interesting. Um, my brain is so um, what was what was the highlight for you? Um, I really enjoyed a lot of the events that just built up to the uh, to the actual mock convention. The, uh, the, the gala, the kickoff, the parade. Um, I thought they were really great opportunities for students to, um, or really everyone on this campus to get together. And I always love big events like that. That's why I really enjoy fancy dress too. You know, it's a, it's a chance for a wide range of students to get together and celebrate or participate in activity together. So, and also to engage the community, the Lexington community, which is why I really enjoyed the parade. Um, as far as the actual mock convention, uh, I really did enjoy just the, uh, I enjoyed the debate a lot. I thought that brought out a lot of great conversations on the student side especially, uh, before and afterwards, just anticipating what would be said and what would be some of the sticky points and then afterwards criticizing both sides and just saying, um, you know, as, like I said, as an engineering student, I don't engage in politics too often. But I also believe that it's something that we should pay attention to as, as a citizen, as a voting citizen especially. It's, 
it's good to be informed of why you know why you're voting for one person or why you aren't voting for another person and um, so being able to engage in those conversations with my friends and with people I didn't know but go to the same school with you know that was really great we may have touched on this already but were there any like skills you learned or honed or um, that during the research or this that would apply to your future career um, for me less so um, but that's also why I wish I took a, a leadership role early on because a lot of my friends that um, were either the heads of a state delegation or on various committees, um, a lot of them received other opportunities based on their experience with mock convention. Um, some of them work in D.C. or have worked, have spent a summer in D.C. working for um, political advocacy groups or for campaigns. And, um, you know, it's a direct uh, it's, it's applicable experience, I guess, that could be used for later internships or for careers. So I didn't benefit as much from that, but that's also why future students should try to get involved, even if they're younger. Um, you know, I was a sophomore, so we only had one year to really um, apply to positions, but I had friends that ended up getting into, while they might not have been the head of, the com of a committee, they were critical, uh, a critical part of that committee, and they still got to meet all the big people, and be a part of the, all the big events, so. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Um, fancy dress is a really expensive, or not fancy dress, uh, mock convention is a really expensive event, but I also think it's something um, that really benefits the school. Um, I'm also a member of the executive committee, so we have to think about how we allocate funds towards mock convention. and. Um, we're trying to figure out ways to be more responsible with the money, but still get a really great event at the end. And you know, one thing that we keep thinking about from the student perspective is just the number of students that it impacts. And it really does bring a large portion of the university together. And that's something that you know, we want to see more of. And I think that's why it's worth raising funds for an event like this. Can you speak just a little bit to the idea of, I mean, Washington Lee seems fairly in that the students are given so much responsibility and latitude. I mean, the, this is a really a student-run thing. And mm -hmm. I mentioned the executive committee also. We've got, um, what is it I'm trying to say here? It, it, it's totally, it's unusual, but it's totally student-run. Yeah. Um, is that a good thing? It's I think it's a great thing. Um, so for, for this event, everything from you know how much so the executive committee will decide how much money every year to give to mock convention but that money goes to the three tri chairs who are also students and they're responsible for organizing the entire event along with all the other students that have leader position leadership positions on the committees and all of that but i think that's an amazing you know it's it's very special um, it's a very special opportunity and i think those experiences again will add to later internships or later careers um, because we get to see all of it. We, we think about every dollar and where it goes um, and we're trying to think about making the biggest impact from those funds. We have to think ahead four years um, when we make that initial budget assessment and we make a, a multi-year plan for how we want to get to that convention. So I think those are also really great experiences too. Thank you for intuitively knowing what it was I was trying to get you to say yeah. when I couldn't articulate it myself. I think we're set. Good.